This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. All right, we're going to use a half angle identity to find the exact value of sine of 157.5 degrees. So first of all, what's a half angle identity for sine? So let's write that out. It says the sine of x over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of x all over 2. So what this is saying is that this angle given, we want to write that as half of another identity. All right, so we could think of it as sine of something over 2 is the same as sine of 157.5 degrees. So let's see, we've got sine of 157.5 degrees. What we're saying, that should be able to be written as the sine of something over 2. All right, so how would we figure that out? We'd say, well, the sine of 157.5 is half of what? Well, you just have to double this to get that. So if I double that, that's 315 degrees. So in other words, this was a clue that if you would write 157.5 degrees as half of an angle, or 350 degrees divided by 2, that the numerator here should be one of our special angles which it is, 315 degrees. So let's go over in the right and just see where 315 degrees is. It's over here in quadrant four. And I like to do it with uh, triangles here. I think of that as one, negative one, those are my x and y values, square roots of two. So remember, that's where 315 degrees is. So by looking at this picture, you should be able to tell what the cosine sine and tangent is. So what's the cosine going to be? It's 1 over square roots of 2 or square roots of 2 over 2. Some of you may know this because you've memorized it. I always draw a picture myself. Um, sine would be negative 1 over square roots of 2, which is negative square roots of 2 over 2. And in the half angle identities, it never asks us about the tangent. So the tangent is negative 1 over 1, but I'm not going to list that right now. So what we want to do is use this formula up here, the sine of x over 2, and our x in this example is 315 degrees. So we're going to plug in 315 degrees for x. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need to write this formula, but there's a little caveat. It says plus or minus. You're going to have to choose whether you're going to put a plus sign or a minus sign in front of the square root. And that's based on the actual angle that we're looking for. The actual angle is 157.5 degrees. So where is that? Where's 157.5 degrees? It is, well, it's less than 180 degrees. It's over here in quadrant two someplace, okay? So in quadrant two, the sine is positive. Okay, so the sine of 157.5 degrees is positive in quadrant, well, it's always positive, but it's because the angle's in quadrant two, right? All right, so that tells us we need to use the positive sign in front of this square root. Be careful that you're not looking at where 315 degrees lies to determine whether this is positive or negative. We're still looking for the sine of 157.5 degrees, so it's where that angle lies that will tell us whether we're going to use the positive or negative. All right, so we have sine of 315 degrees over 2. I see I'm going to run out of space here in a minute, so I'm going to write that up here instead. This is, I'm just writing this as 315 degrees over 2. So I have a little more space for the formula now right here. So this would be, according to this formula, we're going to use the positive sign. You don't have to put a plus sign, because if you don't write anything, we assume it's positive. And the formula says 
1 minus the cosine of x. Replacing x with 315 degrees, we have cosine of 315 degrees all over 2. So we need to know the cosine of 315 degrees, which I already wrote over here in purple. And we plug that in and we're going to simplify this. So going down a little, I'm going to leave off that plus sign, don't really need it. In the square root, I've got 1 minus, now what's the cosine of 15? It's the square root of 2 over 2. So you have square root of 2 over 2, all over 2. So underneath this big square root sign, I now have a complex fraction. So now you have to remember your algebra, how are you going to deal with a complex fraction? And the way I, you could do this over on scratch paper, the way I do this is I multiply the numerator and denominator by the least common denominator, which is 2. So I'm going to take the whole numerator and the whole denominator, multiply each by 2, distributing the 2. So I still have one big square root sign. Let's see. There we go. So I have 1 times 2, right, which is 2 minus. Now when I do the square root of 2 over 2 times 2, that 2 is going to cancel, which is the whole point of multiplying by the least common denominator. So that's just going to give me square root of 2 all over. And in the denominator, I have 2 times 2. So almost done. That's the square the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom, right? Square root of the whole numerator. So the square root of the numerator is the square root of 2 minus square root of 2. So check it out. You have a square root inside of a square root, and you're pretty much stuck with that. You can't do anything about that. And in the denominator, you've got square root of 4, right? Thankfully, that's a perfect square. So I can now just write this as square root of 2 minus square root of 2 minus square root of 2, right? That's all under the square root sign. And in the denominator, square root of 4 is 2. So I have simplified this as much as I can because I've rational, the, the denominator doesn't have a square root anymore. And so this is the answer for the sine of 157.5 degrees. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.